Hey, good evening all. Hope you're having a good night. Thanks for tuning in to TGPF. This is Shutter here, and you are locked in to the StarCraft Showdown, uh, presented by NVIDIA and Patriot Memory. Uh, we've got the final round of our round robin to play this evening, who will determine uh, who gets to head up into the championship match to be played tomorrow night. Uh, first up, we've got Torch and Jaeger. Uh, I'm going to bring up the current standings right now. Well, I thought I was, but apparently I'm not. Yeah, indeed. That's strange. In any case, um, I do believe we have uh, Nottagast up at the top with 4-1, and one, if I remember right. I think Eckstein's got them all written down, so maybe I'll I'll just... Right in front of me. Toss it we in him. To Go ahead. Paper and ink back up. No worries. <laughs> we analog <have> shit. <laughs> Think analog, baby. Sickness is at the uh, top of the charts uh, with a five and one record. Um, that was uh, three and zero oh versus um, one of his opponents, and a two and one versus the other. Nada in second place with four and two. Torch in third place with two and four, and Jaeger in fourth place with one and five. And uh, Jaeger is unfortunately um, eliminated from the championship match. As uh, even if he were to match Nada's record and uh, secure a uh, 3-0 and record tonight, he would lose in the head-to-head uh, -head category. Came and uh, Torch, is <laughs> Torch is saying, uh, so am I, but um, I don't believe that is the case. No, I think, um, as I think Nada Torch could still, still has still an get... outside chance. Yeah, as Nada, if, if Nada got 3 and owed. Um, tonight uh, and didn't win a map, he would still be 4-2 and two. and if Torch has an overwhelming victory against Jaeger and pulls out a 5-4 and four final record, he would be in front of Nadagast. So um, still plenty to play for, but either way, we are just super excited to have this match in front of us. Um, we are going to get things started. Uh, we just cited in the broadcast that we are also going to include the map choices for tonight. Um, and just include that broadcast uh, that in our broadcast uh, as it is interesting. I am going to flip a coin in just a second. Torch is uh, tails since he starts with a T. Mm, isn't that sweet? And Jaeger is going to be heads. So um, the coin flip is about to happen. Excuse me. Looks like that is tails. So tails for Torch. Torch wins the uh, coin flip. That means he gets to choose uh, the either the first map to eliminate or pick the first map in the order. Torch, my man, what is it gonna be? <clears throat> he is going to veto second. Torch is without a mic, so uh, we got Shutter translating, as it were. Yeah, Torch is gonna um, veto second. Yep. So Torch uh, is gonna veto second and Jager pick first the friend. order. So Jaeger gets the first veto. We have a seven map pool, which um, <clears throat> is Shakur's Lost Temple, Scrap Station, Jungle Basin, Blistering Sands, Zelenaga, Caverns, Metalopolis. Uh, Scrap Station? All right, it. my man Jaeger taking out Scrap Station. <laughs> Torch says in the chat, blistering sands, so that is removed as well. Temple. Temple is Diego's choice. Cross that right out. And Shakuras is the final map eliminated, which leaves us Jungle Basin, Zelnaga Caverns, and Metalopolis. And it is uh, Torch's map, which we play first. Zelnaga Cavern. Excellent. All right. So there we go. Zelnaga is the first map of the night. Again, this is the third and final day of the regular part of this tournament. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be moving on to the grand finals between whoever has the most points at the end of this. Uh, right now, Torch and Jaeger are uh, in the bottom uh, section of our current players, but um, there is a still still a chance for uh, Torch at least. So let's get this thing started, guys. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> One second. <clears throat> Alrighty, we just gotta set the game up. Get all the players in here. It's gonna be awesome, of course, for the viewers just joining this tournament. Uh, Torch is a Terran player, yay or Protoss. We've seen a lot of interesting builds from Jaeger uh, and, and Torch. Um, Torch uh, likes to go for this uh, gas first build and uh, pump out a couple Hellions, mix those into his army. Players are seeing, wishing each other good luck. Uh, Zelnaga Towers, uh, uh, Caverns, excuse me. Uh, Torch uh, maybe might want to use a little bit more siege tanks in his armies than he usually does. What do you think? Well, this is a longer map, so, you know, siege tanks are rather immobile. Uh, it's not always the right choice to go with the siege tanks on Zelnaga Caverns. I think we're going to see Torch open with a Reaper, as per usual, and then move into Hellions. He really likes to have good knowledge of what's going on in the map, good mm -hmm. map control. Um, and Jaeger, you know, we saw him uh, in the first day of this tournament do a bit of cannon rushing, a bit of a um, pretty... Uh, non-standard play in that regard as well. So two players who who really aren't gonna aren't gonna go by the books. That, and that is gonna make for a good match. Definitely. And so up in the top right, we've got our player from Korea, Trevor Houston, aka Torch, in as the Terran, as the blue Terran. And down in the bottom left, we've got a uh, Jaeger, both <laughs> these, uh, as the Protoss. Both of these players are ex Team Fortress Two uh, players. They both played competitively, and that's kind of the theme of this tournament, if you are uh, just tuning in for the first time tonight. Yeah, uh, Michael Jaeger Marson. And uh, as the uh, TF2 qualifications go, I mean, I was trying to get Jaeger to um, repeat it on air yesterday, I believe, um, about what he said to me when I told him. I was like, yeah, we're trying to get Torch in the tournament. And he was like, Torch? I remember Stomping on that guy as soldier, um, <laughs> which is pretty hilarious. Because I mean, Jaeger is a vicious soldier, and he pretty much stomped on everybody for quite a while there. I mean, like a few exceptions, uh, and it was kind of a shock to the TF2 community when he announced that he was going to switch over to StarCraft 2. Um, but we're excited to see him, you know, like throw down his gameplay here because obviously he's a very talented esport athlete. Athlete. Oh, let's not get into that discussion again. <laughs> really, no, no, we don't need to go there. What do you there. call him? Esport gamer? Esport gamer? Esport athlete? So again, oh, as per usual, artists. Torch is throwing down uh, that refinery quite early on, actually getting almost a 13 racks, just a, 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 a little bit late on the racks as well. So that actually is going to make him vulnerable to early pressure, but it doesn't look like Jaeger is really going to be going for that kind of pressure at this point. Torch just now getting his scouting SEV into Jaeger's base. He's going to see exactly what's going on, which is not much. A very normal yeah. <laughs> gateway and cyber core getting thrown down right there. And actually Jaeger's... Jaeger's... Uh, little probe there is continuing to do a massive amount of harassment uh, again wow. Torch is playing from Korea so he has pretty high ping uh, but he's still gonna be able to out micro that that probe and uh, there factory. comes the uh, tech lab and a factory, factory. Yeah. and uh, Torch's probe still able to run around like a madman but as Fish stated uh, really right now it's just pylons and cyber core in a gateway so you know nothing nothing really too telling Indeed. Yeah, Jaeger's been uh, favoring the uh, you know warp gates, going up for four gates uh, or higher. Um, do you think uh, it's you know this is kind of long distances on this match? Do you think a Protoss should try to pressure, or uh, what do you think is going to be a successful tech choice for Jaeger? Well, uh, you know, we saw we saw Jaeger pull out the. Uh, Zealots with leg speed and uh, storms, which is pretty beastly in the late game. So I believe if we do see uh, expansions go up and this game go further on into the late game, I, I believe we're going to be seeing those very, very powerful storms. Um, 
And I, I either that or Colossi, but Colossi a little bit more risky. Looks like Jaeger is actually going to be pushing in early. This is a bad position for Torch right now. He does not mm -hmm. have the forces to deal with this one Zealot and one Stalker. I did not expect to see them come in so soon. He's going to have to pull out S SCVs yeah, just wow. to survive this push. Uh, he does have a Reaper. Gonna, it's going to do quite a bit of damage as well in Jaeger's base, but uh, he needs to make sure this st Stalker goes down before anything bad happens. Actually, those SCVs doing a quite a bit of damage. Not um, enough pressure on the Stalker, though. I mean, the Stalker, stalker is, is gonna microing fine. He's just going to keep walking away, though, until the SCV finally turns around, and then he's just going to turn around and shoot him. I mean, as long as... Uh, yeah, he missed the opportunity to do that, but uh, he could have picked up one more kill there. I mean... Uh, Torch, he's got the micro disadvantage here. It's um, uh, tough for him to uh, pull back and really, you know, finally tune those things. Wow, and, uh, I guess it was a Reaper doing damage behind. Is that correct, Fish Six? six Absolutely, that Reaper. Oh. The Reaper is able to get down six of Jaeger's uh, harvesters, which is actually just so massive at this early on in the game. Yeah. Even though Torch is only up by two uh, harvesters, he actually has a lot more units out on the field. Those Hellions are going to be so annoying to deal with. Uh, that means Jaeger is going to have to keep Stalkers in his base and play defensively for now. He is, uh, Jaeger that is, is getting out an Observer to see what's going on on the map. And Torch actually has units just spread apart about everywhere. And now a Banshee's out on the field, wow. which is pretty interesting. I We haven't seen him get this early of a Banshee, uh, not getting the Cloak upgrade, just adding it into his arsenal for now. And actually, this is a really interesting uh, army composition. Two yeah. Hellions three Marines and one Banshee. I don't think he's going to be able to do too much against I, the Stalkers. Now uh, a few more are getting warped in right now. Yeah, it was five Stalkers. Looks like now it's seven Stalkers and a Sentry. Uh, you know, he's going to make sure that his opponent doesn't have an expansion. Might be able to do a little bit of a harass here. Oh, the Hellions get trapped in by that force field. Great move by Jaeger. That's got to hurt. Yeah, that's uh, 200 minerals right there. Uh, Torch's command center, though, is uh, getting close to finishing up, so he's going to be going for an earlier uh, expansion, a siege tank coming out as well, and a raven. Kind of interesting there. He sees all of those stalkers, so I think that raven's primary purpose is going to be for the uh, for the point defense drone. Uh, it really it blocks about half the stalker shots, which really uh, nerfs them quite a bit. Um, and it, it, actually, Torch has already got up his second orbital command, but uh, Jaeger hasn't even started to build his expansion. He actually has a much larger army than Torch does, so Torch is going to have to play very defensively here if he wants to survive this push. I don't think he can push out right now. He does have one tank out, but I believe he's spreading his tech a little too thin. He's got a Banshee, mm -hmm. he's got a Raven, he's got a, a Reaper, he's got a, a Siege Tank, and that's that means he <laughs> a is Banshee, not going to have a a big enough army, I don't think, to deal with this. Yeah, Although, I... Jaeger pulling back. I, I agree with you, and I, I think uh, Jaeger could have pushed in there. Um, you know, Torch kind of, I think he's really shown a tendency to toe the line. Um, and and he feels like he has been safe in some of these games that have been played in the TGBF TV show, uh, Showdown series, which if you haven't seen any, any of them, you should check our VOD series. But it seems like Torch has always been towing this line of, like, barely being safe. And I think right now, like you say, he has so much different tech out right now. And I think that if Jaeger had actually pushed in, like now he's pushing in, but he hasn't added anything to this force. Like if he would have pushed in a minute ago, he would have been, you know, it would have been more likely. Uh -oh. Now this is going to be interesting conflict though. Torch may be out of position. Oh, see second in force field. That's huge right there. And actually, yeah, the, the point tough. defense drone getting drone down a little bit prematurely. Uh, it looks like Jaeger's going to see that and back off. A pretty wise choice. Uh, it's a little premature, but it is going to allow Torch to start to move over this orbital command. If you noticed, he's actually been powering out SCVs constantly. Jaeger's been chrono boosting out probes, but uh, Torch has been powering out SCVs with two orbital commands. He is ahead in the harvest count just by a little bit, but he definitely needs to move that orbital command over to the nat his natural expansion because second Jaeger has Nexus. just uh, yeah, transferred his probes. Yeah, second Nexus just finishing. Both of us on the same page there trying to call the same call. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was talking first, asshole. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs>
Again, I, I think Torch could be macroing a little better. Uh, he he was just at about 700 minerals. Uh, I Again, he is not favoring too much bio lately, although he does have stim and uh, concussive shells researched. Uh, but, uh, you know, he I don't think he has enough bio on the field at this point. And, uh, you know, he's, he's opting to build Vikings, which are not very strong against this primarily ground force of, excuse me, Jaeger. So... Yeah, I definitely think that's been a, a unique feature of torches, uh, which, you know, if you're, I think you go into deep analysis over is his lack of bio. It seems like in all the games we've casted of him, he's always uh, very close on, you know, not quite having enough marine marauders, you know, these engagements where it's just like, we wish he had a little bit more. Um, he does have that strong force going on right now, a good chunk of marauders. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe he's adjusted his play a little bit. So charge is just about to be done for Jaeger, which is going to be a huge, huge uh, factor mm -hmm. in this next upcoming battle. Actually, Torch might get to engage before charge happens. I think Jaeger realizes that he wants to wait for that charge. At least he's going to back off to his uh, photon cannons, which he's thrown up at his natural expansion. But actually, all of a sudden, that's a whole lot of marauders. I think those those are going to be able to tank so much damage, and if he gets those tanks in good position, this could be a quite successful push. Yeah, I like if it has the uh, two Vikings just to assist with any air defense if they were to encounter it. But there is no Stargate up. Templar Archives going uh -oh. down to Jaeger. Finally starting to transition to that high Templar play. It might be too late, though. I mean, if Torch pushes in with this, he could do a lot of damage. And that tank is taking out that cannon very slowly but surely. Oh, good flank here. Oh, my God. Where did that army come from? Raven is low on health as well. Throws down a sentry, though. Sentry, that's almost TF2 talk. Those le zealots with leg speeds actually wow. doing an insane amount of damage. It looked like Torch yeah. had so many wow. marauders there, but if you look at it, uh, Jaeger has gotten plus one, plus one, and I think that was really the defining factor in that battle. Wow. Torch had a big army, but it wasn't doing very much. Yeah. So now Torch throwing down a couple of defensive bunkers, and that's really his last resort. That was some roaming soldier flank action by uh, Jaeger right there, man. I mean, it's just a really super effective flank, trapping Torch's units in there. Look at these SCVs coming down to repair. That's almost too many. Like, Jaeger just says, whatever, man. Like, repair that bunker. I'm just going to walk over here and kill your refinery and your SCVs. Dude. A little bit of missed micro, though. A couple of... Uh Zealots getting knocked down yeah. uh, a little bit more than they should have been, but still, Torch is in a horrible position. <laughs> he does have those uh, medevacs healing up his units, but I, I think that's just too many stalkers and too many zealots with leg speed right now. Uh, he's going to have to retreat from this position. Uh, he actually does have two tanks out on the field, though. That's actually going to be huge in this defensive yeah, play. Definitely. You know, and uh, I just want to point out that those uh, Marauder uh, slow concussion grenades are uh, just as cheap as the Natasha from Team Fortress 2. Uh, <laughs> it has a similar uh, slow effect, and it's insanely frustrating, and it's it's OP, OMG. Uh, so those those Marauders with those conch, uh, conch grenades just doing great work against those Zealots. Torch has actually almost completely mined out his main base, uh, while Jaeger actually has quite a few minerals left over. Um, Jaeger has not actually mined as nearly as many uh, minerals at this point, but he still does have a, a much larger army. I think those zealots with leg speed are just doing so much damage. Look how many zealots yes. he had. 29. I looked at the count just a second ago because I was thinking the same thing that you were. And he's also, I mean, he... Uh, cranked out the upgrades in the last game, and he has two and two, two on armor and two on oh, um, ground attack. I mean, that, yeah, and his um, uh, torches, uh, marines are zero and zero. I mean, like, it's just you know, one versus one, one versus zero, zero is a big boost. Two, two versus zero, zero is like insane. I'm just gonna cut through those like butter. I mean, those zealots are just gonna close the ground and uh, work their way through him. And once he starts to get more and more High Templars, he's starting to get the Kaidarian Amulet, which means that every Templar that he warps in is gonna have a Psy Storm ready. I mean, like, I just don't think that Torch has enough of an army to, like, be hit with four storms and then be like, uh, it's cool, I'm still gonna destroy this Protoss fool. It's like he's gonna get eaten alive by this shit. 
You know, tanks can only do so much. Actually, zealots with like or with the charge are uh, almost a hard counter to yeah. tanks. Especially uh, he he only has four. That's not going to be enough. Even yeah. if all zealots are bunched up, it's not going to be enough. But there's the next he expansion. And, and, and he just threw down uh, ground weapons level three upgrade. So, I mean, he's going to have this uh, high Templar upgrade that's going to finish in just a second. He's got this ground level three upgrade that is well on its way. And he has total control over Torch's gold rocks. He's got no chance. He's moving out here with SCVs. Oh, my oh, God. Poor Torch. Those storms are insane. Yeah, wow. I, I feel bad for the guy. There's absolutely nothing he can do with the Done. high tank that he has to micro out of those storms. And that's going to be a rather one-sided game one. Unfortunately for Torch. Man. So Torch losing right here makes it... Uh, does that does that uh, it makes it very unlikely that he's going to be able to move on uh, to the finals tomorrow. But either way, we've got a couple more matches up for you guys. Do we know what the second map? M Metalopolis. Torch just uh, messaged me Metalopolis. Okay. Um, so let me uh, set that up. Uh, is Andy Zoom in the call now? He was uh, running a little late from work, but I think he is he is totally ready for some analysis. Andy, what did you catch of the match, and what were your thoughts on it? Oh man, that was uh, that was fun. That was a fun thing to watch right there. I don't think I've ever seen so many zealots in one game, um, all stacked together. You know, you guys you guys pretty much covered it on that one. Um, Torch with his with his uh, half half the globe ping uh, issue, what he's working with there is is got to build um, units that cater to that. The fact that he can't micro very well, and it seems like Marines are a pretty micro in intensive unit, um, so he can't really do the you know the the heavy marine play that we've been seeing lately um so you know his strategy is very unique and it just seems to be getting overrun by jaeger's uh templar zealot play which is extremely effective versus terran i have to say it was a pretty pretty awesome little battle right there at the very end um i i actually thought that torch had it with um his marauder tank push um, but when those two, um, you know, wisely Jaeger waited for charge to finish um, and then used those couple zealots he warped in at his natural to flank, uh, draw the tank fire away so those tanks weren't allowed to splash the entire army that he had waiting. Um, and then he moved the armor, uh, the army in flank roaming style, like you were saying, <laughs> soldier roaming style, and then uh, <laughs> and just decimated his army with those zealots. So, I mean, and of course... Um, Upgrades are a big factor, like you guys are saying. So I think I think Jaeger just straight up, um, just straight up kicked the pants off him right there. <laughs> Much word word up. <laughs> uh, we have the uh, second map going down. Metalopolis. Jaeger saying in chat, I think every game needs the ability to GG before the game's um, objective has been completed. Um, just you know, let players quit. If it's done, it's done. Yep. I, I feel like we've seen a little bit of crossover with that GG uh, manner in, into the Quake community, actually. Uh, beforehand, yeah. if someone was getting just destroyed on a, in a one versus one, they would probably, they would almost 95% of the time just duel it out to the to last uh, 10 minute mark. But uh, actually, in the last couple of months, we've been seeing people GG out when, when their opponent comes up with like a 15 frag lead really early on. So I think it's a good tradition. It's class. If you're, if you're, class. If you, I mean, yeah. It's classy, and it also allows the opponent who's getting just totally destroyed to uh, hopefully uh, recoup mentally for the next map, uh, which I certainly hope Torch has done. They have spawned in cross positions as far away as possible wow, as they yeah. could have. Jaeger is in the top as the blue Protoss, and Torch in the bottom as the red Terran. Definitely. <clears throat> now, um... Sorry, I just had it stuck in my mind, but there was a, there was an instance in TF2 where uh, uh, Dignitas, one of the top European teams, actually they gave GG and were still pushing in and then end up uh, taking the match. Ooh, which, uh, no, that's bad man. Bad manner. Yeah, that's, that's kind of BM right there. <laughs> Excuse my cat. Going a little nutty. <laughs> 
No, I think uh, actually these long positions probably are gonna uh, benefit Torch's style of play just a little bit, since he does like to have such great map control and, and keep so many tabs on his opponent. Um, I think that he's gonna be pulling out that early Reaper and early Hellion once again, as per yeah. usual, as he has seemed to do in almost every single round of this tournament so far. So Hellions are quick and he'll be able to get to his opponent's base quickly and know what's going on. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, both players getting their scout on. Oh, no, excuse me, where's Torch's scout? Jaeger's probe coming in. Um, you know, seeing the same thing. Uh, refinery first, then barracks. Yep, nothing deviating. No deviation whatsoever from Torch's norm. Except actually for managed to late late I'd, scout though. Um, definitely, I'd say that. Well, he's he's actually managed to do a, a fairly late scout, most games. Um, not super super oh, late. But. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this could be a, a very different uh, from normal Metalopolis game uh, due to these long spawns. I think we might see some airplay. It seems like Jaeger hasn't really busted out the. Uh, Stargates the Void Rays, or... Yeah, I don't crazy. think we've seen Jaeger get a single starport, actually. Yeah. In the couple times we've seen him play, and actually the only time Torch decided to go with an air-heavy army was the one game he took off Sickness <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. In which he just got a ridiculous amount of Banshee. I'd <laughs> love to see that happen again. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. The, uh, like, five Banshee army with two more on the way. Um, and then just kind of like sacrificing those banshees to kill those two hatcheries. Uh, it was pretty, pretty crazy game. So check this out. Uh, Torch uh, spa scouted the two closest positions, sees that his opponent isn't there. He knows that his opponent is going to be able to chrono boost out that stalker and uh, deny any scouting. So he just says, you know what? I'd rather have this extra SCP. I'm going to send him back home. Yeah, it's interesting. Just use a scan later. Well, there's two racks uh, for Torch. We, we mm, haven't seen him yeah. get those really early two racks much. I, I believe that's probably because he wants to maintain a very mobile army. Uh, you know, Terran uh, Bio with the stim capability is quite mobile on this gigantic, gigantic map with uh, long spawn positions. So I think that's probably why he's doing that. Actually, looks like a really early natural expo for Jaeger. I wonder if Torch is going to be able to scout this. Oh, move your million. What yeah, the hell? The, the Torch should be able to catch it as well. Um, yeah, no, definitely very early from Jaeger. Maybe he figured with that. Oh, interesting. Pylon is going down. Torch, That's not no. a block. Torch just, um, oh, no, he wow. actually did see. Oh, my see. God. Oh, I totally missed whatever that was. Was it a Reaper? Uh, that that was the, yeah, the Reaper jumping up the cliffs and uh, Jaeger's probes instantly surrounding it as soon as it got up the cliffs and just uh, taser beaming it down to death uh, very quickly, very quickly. So actually, this is a bit more standard by Trevor this time. He's getting a reactor on his second barracks and he got that early tech lab as per usual now he's getting a third rack so even though they're extremely long positions he sees his opponent went for the very early expo and i think he's going to try to move out quite soon looks like double hellions i'm not sure if i agree with the double hellions play when you're actually going for a solid attack hellions are really great for harass and for gaining map control but I mean, we'll see what he can do with them if he wasn't in korea he might be able to micro them a bit better yeah that's definitely an issue tonight. Um, and Jaeger, on the other hand, is going for three gateway and a robo. Uh, we, he hasn't really thrown down the robo facility that often in the previous matches, um, you know, or, or put it to uh, that great of use. Instead, uh, choosing for the high Templar play. Um, but this seems a little bit earlier from him, and maybe with these long spawn positions, uh, he's uh, could get something else in. Though no, Torch is moving in, taking out the. Force of Jaegers at uh, the bottom left, Zelnaga Tower, and starting to move out with this. He, he has a very small window of opportunity. His opponent has yeah. almost over 10 more Harvesters than he does, so he has to make something happen with this push. He has to at least kill a number of probes to make it worthwhile. There down goes one Hellion already. That's why I'm wary of the Hellion play, but it looks like Torch says, screw it, I'm doing a 
quasi all in play and bringing a ton of SCVs as wow. well. Looks the like those reaction. SCVs. Uh oh. This is the this is the crucial moment in this game. Can how much damage can Torch do? Looks like he can do a lot. He might actually be able to focus fire this though. Nexus down. Yeah, the mortal is out though. though as well. And uh, I think Jaeger should push back in though and save this Nexus. He doesn't have. I guess he doesn't really have the troops though. He's definitely concerned about that confrontation. Yeah, I think this could be it though for Jaeger though. I mean, if he doesn't stop this Nexus from going down, what is what else is he gonna bring to the table? True. A lot of harvesters were killed. A lot of Jaeger's harvesters are not in action at this point. So actually, Torch has equalized this game. I wouldn't say he has a commanding lead, but it is much, much equalized. Um, you have to remember, Torch's... though, he bringing all these SCVs off yes, really exactly. hurt his income. Exactly, and he, and he had to send them back. I mean, they're they're just now getting back to mining and doing what they're supposed to be doing. And in the meantime, Jaeger's just mining away. I mean, he. He certainly lost that Nexus. He's oh great trap on those Marines there. And Torch is moving those. Torch, Torch. Yeah, he lost a bunch there. And I that's think that was lag, dude. Nah, yeah, uh, probably. Probably. I think that was lag. Poor guy. Yeah, that's gonna help. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna help. 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 Yeah, Right now, it seems like it's uh, speeding up the speed of light is kind of a tough thing to do. Uh, playing from Korea will probably have lag for quite a while to come. And that's kind of sad, but, you know, that's the laws of physics, baby. <laughs> and there's a proxy pylon as well, so Jaeger will be able to, and he is warping in even more stalkers. That's a lot of stalkers. Wow. They do actually quite well against Hellions. There's that is so many Hellions by Torch. I don't think that's the right choice. It could. Oh, this battle's gonna be really interesting. I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, I think Torch could have actually played footsie a little bit more. Again, maybe it was the lag. Maybe he is just deciding all in. He can't control his units. That Immortal needs to go down. Maybe could have been focused and firing it a little bit more. Uh, this is gonna be tough for him. Oh, Ouch. just SCVs left. Two Mar one Marauder and a bunch of SCVs. GG. Ah, tough game for Torch. Ah, uh, man, I, I, I don't even... I, I'm just a Torch fanboy, so I probably shouldn't comment too much on this, but I just feel so bad for him with that insanely high ping. Really no way to micro whatsoever when you got a three-second delay, but eh, either way, GG. Interesting play. Yeah, Fun times. I... I agree. I mean, uh, not to take away from the play of Jaeger, who has been uh, bringing the game. Um, Andy, what is your uh, analysis on that game, real quick? Um, you know, Jaeger's looking more and more solid. Um, past couple of days, he he. Uh, I think today he looks a lot more solid than he has in the past couple of days. Torch, I'm a big fan of. Well, uh, good friend of Trevor's. You know, we played TF2 together. Um, but you know, it's just I think you're right. The ping is just really killing him, and he's got such a unique style. I, I uh, would love to see him play live in Korea. Absolutely. Let's get into our third and final game between these two players. The map <laughs> is another long one for sure. Long rush distances in every map so far. Jungle Basin is the selection. Uh, oh, bunch, of, bunch of support going out for Torch. Uh, uh, we we love the guy. We're, I mean, we're really happy to have him here, and uh, we're honored to have him as a player. And uh, you know, we we knew this was going to be an issue coming into it. And and Torch, when we were talking to him, he's like, uh, you know. I'm not sure how the lag's gonna be, but I'd be excited to play in this tournament. And we are definitely excited to have him in this tournament. And it's unfortunate that the uh, lag is holding him back from performing to his potential. But at the same time, we've had plenty of exciting from play, uh, play from him. And uh, it's been a great learning experience. And uh, all of these matches with Torch have been a ton of fun. So uh, we're very thankful for his play in this tournament. So I, I, I've always wanted to do a tasteless impression, but I think we'll do that 
I'll, I'll start off the next uh, game with that. Uh, over in the top left position, we ha do have our Jaeger, uh, Protoss player in the red. Uh, Torch down in the bottom right as our Terran. So, again, very, very, very long rush distance. Makes for a. Usually, players opt for a very, very early natural expansion as your natural is so well defended in the early game. Mm -hmm. Does have the destruct destructible rocks in the back, but that doesn't really come into play until later. So you get you, you generally see people, uh, you know, Terrans will one racks expand, Protoss will one gateway expand. Um, not really sure how they're going to play this one out, but I do know that Torch has gotten his early refinery once again, so Hellions are the norm. Mm-hmm. I've actually been uh, emulating uh, Trevor's um, double Hellion play, uh, where, where you get the reactor on the barracks really early. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit on the ladders lately. It, it, it works if you have perfect micro, but you really have those <laughs> are so weak, and they're so hard to work with. Well, maybe that's uh, part of the issue holding them back here. Uh, we've already dwelled on them a little bit, but certainly if the uh, build is, um, excuse me, built around uh, micro skills if he's not able to put that micro to use uh due to the lag that's certainly going to hold him back a little bit <laughs> yeah torch even having some trouble uh you know placing that uh, rally point on the pro probe um over in jaeger's base the cybernetics core is just getting up i expect him to once again chrono boost yes there it is that warp gate Mm -hmm. Tech coming on out. And here comes the stalker. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jaeger certainly likes to uh, hold on to his early minerals and uh, just get ready to, you know, throw down three gateways real quick and uh, power up, as we discussed earlier in this tournament. So I'm expecting expansions by both players within the next 20 seconds here. Could be totally wrong. I don't think so. Could be right on the button, man. You know, Jaeger does have that over 400. Instead, going for two gates in the back, uh, three gates. Mm. So Jaeger not expanding. Torch um, expanding. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, Torch is going to need, absolutely need, to get up a bunker if he wants any chance at stopping this. In yeah. fact, this early this early stalker could even give him some trouble as he only has one marine out. Uh, the first yeah. marauder is coming. Actually, with one marine and one, one marauder, he should be just fine. But he needs to get that Hellion into his opponent's base so he can scout those warp gates. Um, Jaeger actually getting a proxy pylon as well, so he's going to be able to warp in so many units so very soon. Uh, yay, yay. Yeah, first stalker going down. If he scouts that pylon, though, um, that could change the situation. Instead, though, the Hellion going up. Seeing the probe, though, this probe already rallied to go over here, though. That could be Jaeger's demise. I yeah, don't think Torch so. Is, Torch has seen the units warping, and he knows there's a proxy play going on uh, through these warp gates. But at the same time, I mean, he he's already made the decision to expand. Um, now he's got to he's got to defend with a bunker and uh, he'll make this happen. Uh, yeah, bunker oh. going down on the left side, just trying to make sure he. Dirty. Wow! Wow! That is amazing pylon. I didn't realize he could warp down there. That is brutal. So now we're going to see a two-pronged attack. Torch has no way to defend both fronts at the same time. He's going to have to run his SCVs away. Luckily, he did not transfer over his SCVs any earlier. Otherwise, he could have lost quite a few of them. Uh, again, so many Hellions just does not work against a primarily Stalker army. If it was a lot of Zealots, on the, on the other hand, that would have been a little different. What? And, and that's basically... Oh, no, no, excuse me. And that's basically, uh, oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, it's basically 400 minerals he wasted on that orbital command or that command center since it's not, you know, mining, it's not producing anything. Uh, Jaeger's army has been reduced to just the, st the stalkers, but he's getting three more in and uh, still pressuring Torch here, who's uh, some of his hellions are starting to get low 
as Jaeger's backing away. As long as he does a quick little cycle here, throw that yellow Stalker back. Yeah, there he goes. Now he's got his healthy Stalker. He's in the front. And uh, he's going to be able to actually chip down this Hellion as he's trying to retreat. Two Hellions left for Torch. And having to, just, to take away a lot of SEVs just to make his army look bigger, basically. <laughs> now they're going to take a lot of sh shots there, actually. Uh, Torch is able to get down a few Hellions, but now he is so far behind in the worker count and the pressure is still on. He does not have enough units to face this. He needs a bunker. Is, is, that's what I'd be doing at least at this point. Um, he's wasted so many SCVs already and he's really not making any progress against this gigantic ball of stalkers. Uh, oh, there's the bunker, but it's not going to be, he's not going to be able to defend it. Down goes the SCV working on that bunker. He, he actually needs that bunker. That's his only option at this point. I yeah. think pushing in here could not be the right idea. Although he has taken down a number of stalkers. It's going to be a war of an attrition though, and uh, he does not have enough units to last. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's going to have to to finish it off here. I mean, he's got no army left. Um, a unit training out of his factory. Yeah, GG can't control anything. Definitely sad face. Definitely sad face. Well, Torch is out of the running. Yeah, it was a, a, a very quick tournament there. A very, very quick series, excuse me. Too bad, so sad. It's impossible to micro with that kind of ping. But uh, nonetheless, we will be moving right along into our next series, but first, um, I believe Torch's microphone stopped working. We were planning on doing post-game interviews. Uh, Torch, I don't know if you're in here or not, but uh, want to get some uh, commentary from our hosts? Andy. <laughs> Andy Zoom. Andy. Chris. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in now. I was, I was waiting for Andy to pop in, but... Maybe he got yep. eaten or something. Uh, I was just trying to get together the uh, the current rankings here. Okay, well, um, why don't we have Jaeger in the call, correct? Yeah, I, I brought him in, so you guys can go ahead Hello. and chat it up a little bit. Excellent. What's up, Jaeger? Feeling good after that series, man? <coughs> um, well, I, I really wish that Torch was on a low latency connection, obviously. Kind of yeah. diminishes the... But... You know, he played uh, really well, I thought, regardless. Uh, so, I don't know. I had fun. I hope he did. Hope he doesn't take it too seriously. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, that was uh, our feeling just going into this tournament. I mean, Torch is a very skilled player, and we're welcome. Uh, we're thankful to have him here. And uh, like you're saying, I mean, his, his strengths as a player showed in his macro and his unique strategies. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, StarCraft is a game of, you know, constant decision making and being able to make the decisions and put the orders in a timely fashion and have your units respond. Uh, and, and unfortunately, the latency of playing from South Korea, which is a pretty far away a place, um, you know, that's just, that's slowed him down. And in and, and those small decisions that's just built up over each game, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's apparent that he's not playing to his full pit, full potential. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, Jaeger, you also had uh, some solid play uh, in this game and uh, in this series. And uh, that's not to take away from your achievement. Thank well, you. I, I, I got to say congratulations, Jaeger, uh, taking that 3-0. I think that... I, is my math wrong? Does he still have a chance at, at taking first place here? He could tie up our first placement if, um, uh, uh, if Sickness loses all three games, right? Uh, he's 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 tied with Natagast at four right now. Oh yeah. Um, so I think I think actually our championship match is already uh, set to be. Uh, yes. If I was tied uh, with either of them, I'd still uh, lose the decider. If you're going by <laughs> head to head. I think so. Yeah. Since I lost Ex the both. Exactly. Of them. Well, either way, Torch is out of the running, and you've earned yourself a Patriot Solid State Drive that's right. for sure. That's yeah, right. third place, man. Drive, man. Hey, man, that's a prize, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the broadcast, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, I and uh, tor- Torch is with us, just not. It, we we've been having trouble with his with his mic. We've been having trouble with his lag. He's been just an absolute trooper this entire uh, uh, this entire show. So <laughs> I thought you were gonna really say tough. he's been nothing but trouble. No, he's, no. I was like, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but trouble. No, he he's been awesome this, this whole time. No, and and he just said sorry. No, there, it's you're in Korea, man. Like seriously, it, it was it was uh, yeah. incredible to even to just even have you. I was just gonna say it it must like. I don't know if this, yeah. if, we'll if going back SSD and playing. If you let me go to Korea, I, I was just I, I'm curious if you have any <laughs> thoughts on this, like going back and playing people, like and practicing in Korea where there isn't going to be this like three second lag, ridiculous stuff. I, I'm sure it's gonna like it, it's like when when you um, when you're playing soccer with one of those little bitty training balls <laughs> and you get really good with that, and then you go to play with like a regular ball and it just feels like a beach ball. I'm sure it's just gonna be how how play is going to feel like to you for like the next week practicing in Korea again. Oh my god, my units respond. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, when he, I have he that He gave me an LOL, chat. nah. Nah. <laughs> he, he's typing. Well, at least we got the uh, vocalizer here. Ah, uh, three games is nothing compared to what I need to play each day here, he says. <laughs> It's absolutely sure he's, true. He's just playing StarCraft 2 like a boss. So he says, so in a bit, I'm yeah. going back to sleep for a while. <laughs> I think it's 3 p.m. there or it, later. So. It totally <laughs> is. It, yeah, it, it's nocturnal. Um, it's like, oh, no, it's, it's, it's almost, almost one, one o'clock, o'clock in the, in the yeah. yeah. Yeah, he went to, oh, he went to bed at 6 a.m. So he's in <laughs> Korea and like his schedule is even screwed. <laughs> Yeah, the schedule screwed anywhere in the world. Like it's just <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, There's hey, no place a, where it's on a normal schedule. We got a, cu- a question from the stream here. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, what what he thinks? Um, uh, how, how, basically, how do you learn the basics um, of the game, and what what do you think the basics of the game are uh, to learn and get better? You know, what are the basically the foundations of a really high level player? I think is what this person is asking. Well, that's about a four-hour discussion, but uh, <laughs> I think it I was a question, us, Trevor. Yeah, Maybe build pylons, build overview. probes, watch your mini map, watch your food. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. He says he says watch pro replays. Okay, uh-huh. and I, I would I would specifically say um, if you head over to uh, day9.blip.tv, you can check out all of his day nine dailies, which are very educational. But there was one specifically. <laughs> Uh, when he was actually at uh, Sir Scoots' house uh, giving DJ Wheat a one-on-one a lesson on air live. And it was actually one of the most useful uh, lessons I've ever heard of, of from uh, from someone giving like advice on StarCraft uh, because he was literally telling DJ Wheat what to do with his fingers and his hand at all times. Um, you always want to have all your uh, unit producing structures on a hotkey, uh, all of your... Uh, uh, harvester producing structures on a hotkey and then your army's on a hotkey and you always want to be double tapping around uh, so definitely go try to dig that up I think it was a few months ago um, but either way uh, that's a great question but I don't think we have really time for that yeah. because no, next he, up I'm sorry yeah, he, he, I just want to make because he's been typing at me um, he just he, he, he just hit a few places to look up he said yeah definitely day nine daily team liquid.net he says, if you're mid-range already, check out gosucoaching.com or myeg.net. So, Indeed. A lot, lot of but, plugs there, well, but, you know. Yeah, not only that, but that's a whole that's a whole six months of basic information that you could gain and be, you could become a, you know, diamond player before you know it if you yeah. just follow yeah, follow yeah. the uh, follow the instructions there. Yeah. All so right, next uh, up, yeah, guys. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Fish. Next up, we've got uh, the two players who have the most points in our tournament right now. It's Natagast and Sickness. Natagast is a Terran player, uh, ex-WOW, a professional WOW Arena player, ex-TF Tour. And then we also have Sickness, who's a Zerg player, ex-TF Tour as well. Uh, the, the cool thing about this match, the exciting thing about this match, is not only are they uh, both uh, going to be in the running for our wonderful prize of an, of an NVIDIA GTX 460, but they are actually brothers. Uh, that's right. They are brothers. So there's extra drama, extra juiciness, extra fun coming down the, the pipelines towards you. Uh, I think all we need to do now is get those two players in our Skype call and move on to the next matches. Yep. I, so I think we're going to round out this edition here. Uh, one more thanks uh, to Jaeger and Torch. Uh, you guys have been phenomenal competitors and 
and uh, great to work with. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! And congrats, Hard Jaeger. Torch. Congrats, Hard Jaeger, torch. for uh, haul, hauling away that uh, solid state drive. Yeah, you. And uh, another big Yay. thanks to Torch. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll catch up with you soon because I want to toss something at you just for just for. Uh, just for coming and playing with us and, and, uh, and sticking with us. So I'll be in touch with you for sure uh, shortly after we finish here. But anyway, uh, thanks again to, to Jaeger and Torch. And uh, we're going to reset here. Uh, we got some more StarCraft coming at you. So you on the stream, don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll be back in uh, hopefully less than 15 minutes with the, with the second matchup of the evening. Uh, so... Go pop some corn and come back, and we'll uh, catch you in a little <laughs> bit uh, for, for all the TGBF crew here. Uh, hope to see you shortly.